Hey, Charlie, are you there? I was just wondering if you already know around what time you're going to be coming home today? Yes, I am going to have to do a little bit of overtime. But that's not why I don't know what time I'll be coming home tonight. What do you mean that you don't know what time you're going to be coming home from work today? I mean, how can you not know? Are they having you stay late for overtime or something like that? Besides, I know that you want me to come back home early when I'm able to, but you don't seem to understand just how much work we have to do here. Hmm. Well, I understand what you're saying, but the fact is that I just really can't promise anything at all right now. Oh, really? I guess I really didn't realize just quite how busy you are. But, you know, apparently there's going to be an event week at the local theme park, and Darla is really wanting to go. And anyways, she keeps going on and on about how badly she wants you to be there with her as well. So, I was just wondering, you think that in a couple weeks, when that is going on, if you could take her out and spend the day with her. But, I could just buy you guys a bus ticket or something like that, and the two of you could go instead, right? I really think that you should go and do this. I mean, when was the last time that you spent so much time with your daughter? I don't really think that's fair at all since you know how busy I've been at work lately. So, you mean that you think you are going to continue to be busy for the foreseeable future? Because I remember you saying the same thing about being too busy to do any of these kinds of things six months ago as well. Oh, really? Did I say that we were really busy at the office six months ago? I don't know if I remember saying all of that to you. Well, you did. And while I can understand how busy you are and how hard you work, I think that the fact of the matter is that you're putting a bit too much of your efforts into your work and not enough with your family. I mean, I think over these past six months, I've barely even seen you at home except when you get back late and crawl into bed. I just wish that you would find some more time in your schedule to be able to spend time with us. Well, I really don't know what you want me to say to that. I mean, after all, I still have work. I can't just not do my job because you want me at home more often. I understand that, but it feels like your job has been keeping you late every day for a long, long time now. I mean, is it really so impossible to get just a little time off? Or even just leave your office at a reasonable hour? You know, Darla is always asking about you and wondering what it is that you'll be coming home. But I feel like you're just always out, and sometimes there are nights where you don't even come back home. And do you want to know why it is that I don't come home on those nights? It's because I have to work long and hard hours at the office overnight just to provide for you and Darla. So I don't really get why you're complaining so much about what I do for a living when you benefit as much as you do from it. I'm not saying that I don't understand why it is that you work as hard as you do. I'm just saying that I wish we got to see you a little longer is all. I mean, I would love for you to finally come home in time for dinner and to be able to play with Darla afterwards. What in the world are you talking about? Darla is a little girl and there's no way that a kid like that would want to play with me at all. You don't know what you're saying, Charlie. Darla is always talking about how excited she is to get to play with you when you come home. Well, you need to tell her to quit putting all that pressure on me because I have work that I need to do. Why does this all have to fall on my shoulders, huh? I don't understand. Are we having some kind of miscommunication? I don't understand why you're reacting like this. All I'm saying is that I ask so little of the two of you and you two are always wanting to get the world from me. And what do I get for all my hard work? I come home to a messy house! I mean, what do you even do all day that you can't even figure out how to keep the house clean by the time I get back from work? Well, it's not like the house is dirty all the time. And sometimes I just don't have the free time to clean the house. I mean, cleaning isn't all I do, you know? I do the laundry, cook, and have to take care of Darla and drive her to all her appointments as well. And so what? Why does any of that matter? Do you really think that you do as much as I do? Because if you think that being a housewife is a real job, then you're wrong. I spend all day outside of home in an office, working my butt off for the two of you. And yet you're telling me that all because of one messy kid, you can't even keep the house in running order? 
Not only that, but Darla's just a little girl. Maybe if she was a boy who ran around and was always making messes, then I could understand where you're coming from. But I don't hear anything but excuses from you right now. Charlie, please. I think that you're being unreasonable. I mean, can't you just try and come home a little earlier, at least once a week? Or at the very least, please make some time for us on the weekend so we can at least do something fun then. I only have a few precious hours every week where I don't have to think about work. In fact, I really don't think that you understand all the pressure that I'm under at all. I've been put on a new project under a new supervisor and have a lot of catching up that I need to do. So, I'm sorry, but you're just gonna have to wait. I mean, if I can do all of this for our family, then you should at least be able to respect the space that I'm asking for to do it. I do understand that you're busy, and I do understand that you work really hard, but I'm also already trying really hard with you. Well, I don't think that you're trying hard enough. I mean, really, I've already told you that I'm busy and yet you insist on messaging me. I have work to do and you're making right now very, very unproductive for me. Do you understand? So if you really do want me to get all my work done in time to come home early, then how about you just leave me alone and let me work for once? I'm so sorry, Charlie. I really didn't mean to upset you like this. I just miss you is all. If you're really sorry about all of this, then you'll never bother me with this kind of silly conversation ever again. I mean, really. You need to open up your eyes and realize that everything I do, I do for you. So the least you can do is keep the house in order, take care of the kid, and not complain about it. You don't hear me complaining about my job, do you? Charlie, please answer me. I just want to know when you're going to be coming back home. I seriously can't even deal with you right now. I thought I told you that I had to go away for a business trip, didn't I? You did, but it's just that Darla and I are sick and we both have fevers. I think that Darla is only getting worse and I really want to take her to the doctor. So could you please come home to drive us there? I seriously can't believe that you're trying to ruin my work all because you do caught little colds. If things are really that bad, then just call a cab and get to the doctor yourself. But I feel so sick. And I can barely even move without being in pain. I have no idea how I would even get myself and Darla out of the house in this state. Are you kidding me right now? Are you a mother or aren't you? Because if you were really worried about the health of our daughter, then I think you would get off your butt and take her to the doctor. But what about you, Charlie? I just told you that Darla and I are really sick. Aren't you worried about us at all? I didn't say that I wasn't worried at all, and I don't appreciate you putting words in my mouth. Thank you very much. Well, then can you please tell your bosses what's going on and have them cancel this trip of yours? Isn't a trip okay? I'm not going on vacation to have fun and drink pina coladas on the beach. Got it? I have to leave and take care of business. Charlie, I know that you're lying to me. I know that you're just going away to cheat on me right now. Excuse me? Are you delirious or something? Did you actually just send me that message? I know it's true though. You're lying to me about your business trip and I know that the truth is you're just going away to cheat on me. Oh, give me a break. Is this really what you wanted to interrupt me at work for? You just wanted to talk about some crazy delusion you have that I'm cheating on you? Does this mean that you're really just going to choose going away with this other woman over helping your own family? For the last time, I am telling you that I am not cheating on you at all. I think that your fever is finally starting to get to you and it's making you say crazy things. I mean, what is your deal? How could you just accuse me of something like that? In fact, if you have so much time to be indulging in wild fantasies of yours, then you can just take Darla to the doctor yourself. But Charlie, I need you to do this for me. You are the only one that can do this for me. You know how far away we live from both of our parents, and our friends just moved away to a different town. You know what that sounds like to me, Samantha? Not my problem. No, if you'll excuse me, 
We just arrived at the airport, and I need to check in and go through security. So you'll just have to figure all this out by yourself. And don't even think about messaging me at all while I'm away on this business trip. I mean it. I seriously can't get any work done at all when you start with me. So just can it until I get back. You don't care about what happens to us at all, do you? I can't believe that you're really going through with this. Man, you really just don't know when to quit at all, do you? If you keep up this conversation with me, then when I get back, you and I are getting divorced. Is that what you want? Are you really sure that you want to divorce me like this, Charlie? It's not up to me, Samantha. It's all up to you. Because I am being a good husband by going to work every day to work hard for our family. And I can't just quit my job or cancel an important business meeting because my wife and daughter have little head colds. Who has even heard of someone doing that? Okay, fine then. If this is the way that you're going to be, then I think that we're done here. Oh, so now you're going to try and pretend to be mad at me. Are you kidding me? You've seriously been pissing me off ever since before I left the house. So if you really don't want me to leave you, then I think that you should keep your mouth shut, your thumbs off the keyboard, and your thoughts to yourself. Because I am not going to sit here and be insulted and accused of things that I've never done by a little parasite like you. Just shut up, clean the house, and take care of the kid. It really is that simple. Hey, Samantha, what's going on here, huh? What's the big idea? Oh, my. And here I thought I wasn't going to be hearing from you for a long, long time. Quit messing around and tell me where you are right now. I'm serious. I don't really see why I should tell you when it's really none of your business at all. Oh, come on. Will you just drop the attitude already? I want to know what is going on and why our place is just a complete mess. And why aren't you at home right now? I thought that you said you were too sick and had a fever and whatever. But I guess you're not too sick to go out and have fun and ignore your duties. I mean, really. Did you think that I was going to let you get away with this? You need to get back here and clean up this mess now. Charlie, your wife and daughter are no longer with us. This is Susan, Samantha's mother. Wait, what? What do you mean? Is this really Susan? What's going on? Well, first of all, you should know that I know all about the horrible way you've treated those two. But I'm texting you from Samantha's phone because a funeral is going on right now. Hold on a second. Her what? Are you kidding me? Please tell me this is supposed to be some kind of joke. Then when you said that Samantha and Darla were gone, you meant... Please tell me that you're lying right now. No, it really is true. The day after you left... I had to take them to the doctors. But obviously, things didn't go so well for anyone. Don't worry though, I'll handle things here. Susan, I want you to know that I'm headed home right now. Oh, don't even bother, Charlie. You would just get in the way. I never want to see your face again. And I certainly don't want you ruining the memory I have of my daughter and granddaughter. I don't know what to say right now. Please, don't just leave me. I've always thought of us as close family. Really? Do you really mean that? Well, it's funny you say that, because it appears as if you were cheating on my daughter. Of course I do. And I really want to get back to pay my respects to Samantha and Darla. No, I really wasn't. But I know that Samantha was convinced that I was. I should have just explained everything to her. But I was so busy then. I am not really interested in hearing what excuses you've come up with. But once I have all the legal matters sorted here, I can assure you that you'll hear from me again. Charlie, is now a good time to talk? Oh, hey Susan. Yes, I guess we can talk about things. No, actually, this isn't my mom, Charlie. Wait a second, are you telling me this is Samantha? I'm really talking to Samantha? But I don't understand. I mean, you're alive? 
That's right, I am still alive and breathing. No thanks to you. But this doesn't make any sense. My mom told me that she was at your funeral yesterday. Then she said that she was going to handle all the legal stuff. Yeah, my mom meant that she was going to handle all of the moving stuff for us. But I don't think that she ever actually said that either of us had died. I guess she never used those words. But she did say she was at a funeral. Did she lie to me? No, she didn't. I took Darla and we've been staying at her place. But a couple days ago, one of her neighbors died, and so that's probably what she was talking about. But I... then I got it completely wrong. I thought that you two were gone. Well, the rumors of my death have been greatly exaggerated. But if you must know, after you left, our fevers only got worse, and I did finally have to take Darla to the emergency room. I passed out in the waiting room, but I had already put down your mom's number as an emergency contact, so she came to pick us both up. Oh, I see. Well, I'm just so glad to hear that you're both okay. Okay? We're not okay at all. You have no idea what I've been through because of you. What about any of this is okay with you? But I mean, I was so worried about you. I really don't care how you're feeling at all. I want a divorce and nothing is going to change my mind. Wait, hold on a second. What do you mean you want a divorce? What do you mean, what do I mean? Do you not know what that word means or something? You chose your mistress over me, and that's really all that I needed to know to make this decision. For the last time, Samantha, I haven't been cheating on you. I wasn't lying about my business trip either. Ask my boss if you want. Oh, I would if it wasn't your boss who you've been cheating on me this whole time with. Wait, how did you... And I know that it all started those months ago, when you started coming home late. You told me that you were busy, but then you never got unbusy, and that's when I started to suspect something. But work really was getting busier, I swear! Even if that is true, it doesn't negate any of what I've said at all. And it was all the more suspicious when you would just spend all day on your phone when you were at home. But you don't have any proof either. You're just making accusations and jumping to conclusions. Actually, I got suspicious, and so that's why I hired a private investigator to look into you. And now I have all the proof that I need to have a smooth divorce. Thank you very much. Hold on. You hired someone to follow me around and see what I was doing? Well, it was obvious you weren't going to tell me the truth, so I had to. For example, I know that your new boss's name is Cindy Smith, and that she's the woman you've been seeing, right? But, I mean, please, you have to understand, I really was on a business trip. Why can't you just be a man and admit when you've been caught? I know that you've been lying this whole time. I know that you've spent the night at this Cindy's house before. And all the while, you've been giving me all the child rearing to take care of while you've been out having fun for the past six months. Do you have any idea the kind of pressure that you've put me under while you've been doing all of this? You're right. It was wrong of me to do that, and I realize that now. I see the error of my ways, and I promise that I'll change. I realize when I thought you and Darla were dead, just how precious you two really are to me. I instantly regretted all the lies and sneaking around, so please trust me when I say that it'll never happen again. Oh, I know that it'll never happen again. But not because you say so, but because soon we won't even be married, and then you can go and do whatever you like. Please, don't do this to me, Samantha. You don't have to do this, you know? You didn't have to do a lot of things that you did anyways. But now, I'm going to make you pay. I'm going to make you pay for cheating on me, for lying to me, for putting all the work of taking care of the house and Darla on me, all of it! So my only advice for you right now is that you might want to think about hiring a good lawyer, because you'll need one. Oh, come on. 
You're really gonna sue me as well? Come on, can't we just talk about this like adults? I know that we can work through this if we try. Hello? Samantha? Are you even reading these anymore? I was actually already in contact with a lawyer to deal with Charlie. That was what his mother really meant when she was referring to all the legal stuff she was doing. And with all the evidence I had against him, the lawsuit and divorce all went by quickly and smoothly. In addition to getting paid a huge sum from Charlie and his boss, Charlie was also made to pay child support while I received full custody of Darla. Meanwhile, both him and his boss were fired for carrying on their affair at work. As for me, I took the money and used it to move out of my parents' place. I bought a nice condo near their house, however, and started working while they would watch Darla, who made a full recovery from her illness. Hello, Becky! How are things? Who is this? <laughs> As if! I know you know who I am! It's me, Sophia! Your BFF? BFF? The whore who stole my husband and vanished into thin air with him? Ouch! Isn't that a bit harsh? It's the truth. So what does the homewrecker want? Can't you be a little more civil? It's been so long since we've texted each other. When I needed to get in touch with you, you ghosted me. Why the heck are you contacting me now after all this time? It's been three years. I don't remember receiving any texts from you. I probably didn't see them. My bad. I know you're lying, but I don't care anymore. So what do you want? I wanted to ask you if there were any issues with Colin's divorce. Huh? Actually, we're gonna get married. So I wanted to make sure there weren't any issues with his divorce. As I recall at the time, things got a bit messy. A bit messy? I was just stating the facts. But you weren't interested in facts. Neither you nor Colin. And you've been running away from me until now. So why are you suddenly contacting me? And where are you and Colin living? Wow, all the interest in our lives. I wonder why? Is it because you still have feelings for Colin? <sighs> Not at all. So where are you living? Well, we're living near my parents' house. But we've kind of run out of money. So I thought we could move in with my parents. I'm sure my parents will welcome us with open arms if we were married. Your parents' house? So you went back to our hometown? That's right. Remember the Chinese restaurant near our junior high school? Our apartment is right next to the restaurant. The rent is much more reasonable in a small town. So you went back. Yep. But Colin takes care of the grocery shopping and everything. So no one knows that I've come back. Hence, no issues. Mom doesn't know Colin was your husband. I mean, now, ex-husband. So I can introduce him as my fiancé. After which, we'll move into my parents' house. Is that so? Oh, and Becky, I would seriously advise you not to come back and create any problems for us. And if you still have feelings for Colin, forget it. We've been together for three years now, and seriously in love. As if I were interested in you and your love life. But tell me, have you spoken to your parents about this? Huh? Not yet. I thought we could go over one night and surprise them. So you haven't contacted them yet? Not yet. So all this time, the three years you've been hiding from me, you've never contacted them? I told them I was going away for a while. No problem. I see nothing but problems. You know your parents have been looking for you. Really? Yeah, but it doesn't concern me, so... Anyhow, remember the money I sued you for? Emotional damages? Can you please pay it already? It's been three years. Huh? Emotional damages? For what? Are you serious? Why do I have to pay this? You and Colin both need to pay it. 
You had an affair with the man I married, which resulted in a divorce. You've been running away for three years now, but it's time for the two of you to face up and pay up. <laughs> what are you talking about? Are we friends, Becky? Friendship is based on give and take. In that case, Sophia, all you've been doing is taking from me. <sighs> Don't be so difficult. Anyhow, let's not bring up the past. It's over. It's been three years. I'm sure the statute of limitation has passed. Let's go back to being friends. I'll just have my lawyer contact you then. Lawyer? Since when do you have a lawyer? I consulted a lawyer when I knew you two would not settle this amicably. Mark my words, you will pay. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I think you're taking this too far. I don't know why you needed to contact a lawyer. I mean, I've done nothing wrong. You stole your friend's husband and disappeared. Isn't that enough? Is there anything else you want to do to cause me pain? Let's take a step back and think about this rationally. Becky, you and I are friends. You don't want money from me. Also, you and Colin, your parents are aware of the situation. What? How? Are you serious? You didn't contact my parents, did you? Think about it. Your parents and mine, they live in the same small town. You know how everyone gossips about each other. Everyone knows. Tell me you're lying. What did you say? Just how you ran off with my husband. I'm sure a juicy tidbit like that won't be forgotten, even after three years. I heard your parents were really embarrassed and have stopped socializing. That's probably why you haven't run into them, though you both live in the same town. What? Oh, I can't believe people would care about something like this. And it has nothing to do with my parents, so I don't know why they need to be shamed by everyone. They're embarrassed because their daughter is a thieving slut. But... This means I can't move back home. I don't know about that. Whether you return or not is your choice. But I don't know if your parents will welcome you with open arms. Well, that ruins my plan. Your plan? Because you ran out of money, your plan was to live off of your parents like a parasite? Are you calling me a parasite? That's mean. It's normal to depend on your parents for food, money, and shelter. By the looks of things, I doubt you have a job, right? I'm currently in between jobs. But in the previous town, I worked a little. And Colin, he does odd jobs to pay him in cash. I can't believe you guys sank so low. You know, Colin used to have a great corporate job. I guess Colin was destined to be a scumbag, living from hand to mouth. What are you trying to say? How were you able to survive for so long without a job? I told you, we work. But nowadays, it's possible to make a living betting on horse races. So don't look down on us. Your primary source of income was through horse race betting? Oh, it's like a job. You arrive at the race course when it opens, and at the end of the day, you leave with cash. And all your money is gone, so you're going to live at home? Looking for a handout? Well, I don't have any choice. We're struggling. We borrowed a little bit of money, and it's difficult for just the two of us to pay it back. You got in debt as well? I wonder if your parents will welcome you back under those circumstances. As it is, I have received money from your parents. Huh? Because you ran off without settling the compensation you owed me? Your parents gave me some money for the trouble you caused me. I'll have you know, they offered the money without me asking for it or anything. I can't believe you're making my parents pay. They have nothing to do with this. I'm not making them do anything. If you cannot be held responsible for your actions, they felt it was their responsibility to apologize for the trouble you caused. Sophia, you're over 30. And your parents still need to bail you out? How embarrassing. Anyhow, I'll have my lawyer contact you. I know where you live, and I won't let you run away anymore. Are you serious? Pay the emotional damage settlement. 
I swear, I will make sure I receive every single penny from you. Relax, Becky. Calm down. I know that you're doing this because you still have feelings for Colin. So, how about this? I will give Colin back. Huh? That should settle it. Problem resolved. I never imagined you would sell Colin just to protect yourself. I have no choice. I know that's what you're after. You are so wrong. I'm after the two of you paying the compensation you owe me. I have no feelings whatsoever for Colin. In fact, I'm engaged. What? To whom? My lawyer. He's also my boyfriend slash fiancé. What? A lawyer? Oh, how dare you have a lawyer boyfriend? We got to know each other when I consulted him about the divorce and compensation. I guess, in a sense, I met him because of you and Colin. Unbelievable. After I stole your super hot husband, you're going to be happy with a lawyer? Well, I'm stuck with a jobless scumbag. I can't believe you're referring to the guy you stole from me as a scumbag. You are such a cow. It's not fair. Give me your lawyer boyfriend. I have no intention to give him to you. Oh, but he will contact you regarding the money you owe me. So I guess you'll have a chance to hear his voice. I'm going to steal him from you as well. Oh, I'd like to see you try and then fail. Thank you for letting me know where you live. You know, I was considering suing your parents for the compensation you owed me. And now that I have the information I need, I want nothing to do with you. Mm, stop it already! I can't believe you would go this far. Don't you consider me to be your friend? Of course I don't. Stop acting so stupid. You don't have to be so cruel. Of course I do. I want nothing to do with dirtbags like you and Colin. But I will make sure I receive the compensation I'm entitled to. You need to be held responsible for the pain you caused me by stealing my husband. But I don't have any money. What am I supposed to do? Ask your parents. Borrow money. There are numerous ways you can get the money. And if you want to repair your relationship with your parents, first apologize to them for all the pain you've caused. Fine. I'll do it. I'll apologize to my parents, okay? Huh? I'll apologize to my parents so we can forget about the compensation money, okay? No, it's not okay. I couldn't care less about what happens between you and your parents. And I have no feelings for Colin. I just can't stand it when people like you can cause this much pain and live your life like nothing happened. I told you, I'll make you pay. Oh, I'm sorry. Ugh, I'll apologize to you as well, Becky. I'm really, really sorry. Even if you apologize now, it's too late. I don't want anything to do with you, Sophia. You'll be hearing from my lawyer. Go to hell, you two-faced cow. Sophia got enraged Becky was ignoring her texts and went to Becky's parents' house and caused a scene. Becky's parents called the police and Sophia was taken down to the police station for a lecture. Being a small town, the police officer called Sophia's parents to release her into their custody. After Sophia's father yelled at her for a few hours, he kicked her out of the house and told her to never come back. Colin disappeared and no one heard from him. But Becky was able to receive Colin's share of the compensation money from his parents. Apparently, there's a missing person request for Colin. Sophia had no place to go. With no Colin, no money, no job, she only has debts she needs to repay. She wanders from town to town, working odd jobs while wondering what she did wrong.